Hi, welcome back to the Lemon Factor. I'm Chad. I got a question for you. Have you ever driven your 10th generation Honda Accord in the fall or in the winter in cool temperatures where you were amazed by how responsive the turbo was, how quickly it spooled up, uh, the power delivery, the consistency in the power delivery? I think we all have. Unfortunately, it's summertime here in Colorado and it's been hot. It has been in the 90s for some time and I'm not experiencing that. Quite to the contrary, I am experiencing some heat soak with our intercooler, meaning that it's so hot, the OEM intercooler, while sufficient for everyday driving, doesn't seem to cut it in cooling the charged air coming off of our 10th generation Honda Accord project car. What does that mean? It means it feels a little laggy. It feels like it take, it's taken a little bit more time for the turbo to spool up, that it's down on power, and, and it probably is. Colder air has more oxygen. More oxygen results in more power. I'm probably down on power because the intake temperatures after the intercooler is a lot warmer than it has been in the past. And we're gonna do something about that. I don't well, like in this video, we're gonna take a look at two of the most popular intercooler upgrades for the 10th generation Honda Accord. We're gonna compare them, fit and finish, the welds, the size, because in this case, size does matter. So a larger intercooler, a more efficient intercooler, will cool the charged air a lot better than the OEM one. Really, anyone who enjoys spirited driving will benefit from an upgraded, larger, more efficient intercooler. So if you're interested in seeing what two intercoolers I purchased and seeing how they compare to one another and the OEM intercooler itself, then stay tuned. probably comes as no surprise that we have the PRL intercooler as well as the Mishimoto intercooler. At the end of the day, I am sure that either one will perform a hell of a lot better than the OEM. So I don't think you can go wrong, but in an effort to test, which we like to do, test things out here on the Lemon Factor, we're gonna unbox both the PRL as well as the Mishimoto we're gonna put them side to side, compare them, see which one is built the best, see which one is larger, and overall we'll decide which one, if any, seems to be the better product. Oh, before I forget, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, hit that notification. So many of you subscribe and thank you, but don't forget to click on the bell and make sure that you're notified of future video releases. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let's take a look at what's in the box. First, we have the PRL cutout. If you wanna use this to stencil the PRL on the front of the intercooler, we also have a couple stickers here. We have a keychain, and let's see, packaged by Eric. Thank you, Eric. Comes with a new clamp for our hose, which will be on this side. And then you can see here a black rubber grommet that'll be used for the other end. So on this side, this is where our Hose will go, and we'll clamp that on. Let's take a look inside. Probably not coming across too well here, but does it the welds look pretty good on the other end. So we're gonna measure the length, height, depth, 
And then I'm going to take a measurement to see how much the whole piece weighs. We'll compare that to the Mishimoto and we'll compare it to the OEM intercooler. The length of the intercooler core comes in at 27 inches. The height of the intercooler comes in at 7 and 3 sixteenths. And the depth of the intercooler comes in at 3 and 9 sixteenths. There are nine rows of cooling fins. The height of each one of the cooling rows is 0.37 inches. There are anywhere between six to eight fins per one inch. There's inconsistencies within the rows or between rows, I should say, as far as the spacing of the fins. So down here, the spacing is much more, is much closer together. And then in other areas, maybe up here, they're further apart. And the PRL intercooler weighs 18.2 pounds. Here's the Mishimoto intercooler. Obviously the intercooler comes with the end clamp. What I don't see with the Mishimoto that the PRL includes is the black rubber seal that goes onto the end. Said this is a nice looking intercooler. It has a smoother finish than the PRL. Now that's just looks, right? We're doing this for performance. Once this is installed, unfortunately, you're not, never going to see this. But these welds on the end look really good. If you're a fan of the M for Mishibono logo on the front, great. If you're not, too bad, you have it. Let's take a look at the ends. That looks nice. That's, that's smooth. Got a nice serial numbering. It's not just a sticker. What I do like about the Mishimoto end is you got some texture to this end, especially at the very end point. There's more of a lip. Let's take a look at the length. 27 and 3 eighths thereabout. The height comes in at 7 and 3 eighths. And the depth comes in at just shy of 3 and 5 eighths. The Mishimoto intercooler offers 12 rows of cooling fins. Each row has a height of 0.31 inches. For the Mishimoto, there are seven fins per one inch. So Mishimoto intercooler weighs 21.8 pounds. Definitely heavier than the uh, PRL. Length comes in at 27 and 7 eighths, a height of 5 and 5 eighths, and a depth of 2 and a half. The OEM intercooler weighs in at a light weight of 6.4 pounds. There are 10 rows of cooling fins, and each row has a height of 0.29 inches. There's a total of eight fins per one inch. It does look a little, just fractionally smaller. Another thing that I noticed the difference being is the holes for the bolts are larger on the Mishimoto. I don't know if that makes a difference. Taking a look at the finish, it's much smoother on the Mishimoto. The comparison of the welds between Mishimoto and PRL. The end of the Mishimoto is a little longer than the PRL. So there you have it, the comparison between the PRL intercooler and the Mishimoto intercooler for the 10th generation Honda Accord. There are some slight differences. 
I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what you think about these intercoolers. Maybe you have one, maybe you recommend it, maybe you don't recommend it. What are your thoughts on what we presented here today? I will be installing one of these intercoolers on our car in the next video. So if you're interested in seeing that video, again, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. With that said, thank you very much for joining and until next time.